Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy and today is October 30th, 2023. It's a little bit before 8.30 in the morning and I wanted to make a quick video to exhort the body of Christ. Um, specifically those of you who have been saved and walking with the Lord for a considerable amount of time. Um, I posted something a little earlier in the community tab that read, Worldly Christians, please stop embracing sin. You're confusing the unbelievers. And I saw it and I felt like it was a message I needed to further elaborate on, especially during these times that we're living in. Again, I'm not talking to anyone who hasn't been saved for a significant amount of time. Um, on this particular video, I am speaking to those of you who have been walking with the Lord for many years, but you still look, sound, think, and behave like the people who don't know Christ at all. Um, this video may step on a few toes, but that's okay. We're in this walk together. Um, and I think this is a topic that we really need to explore, especially again during a, a very pivotal and critical time in the age like this. Many years ago when I first got saved, an older sister in Christ invited me to join her on a prayer call line each morning at five o'clock. For the most part, it was just her and I on the call each morning. Um, and from time to time, other sisters joined us um, to pray. But again, for the most part, it was just she and I. It was a beautiful start to each morning. And as a newbie in Christ, I feel like it was just what I needed. I was learning to wake up in the morning and seek the Lord. I was learning to give the Lord my first fruits. I was learning how to pray. Um, however, in retrospect, I believe the Lord connected me to this sister and this prayer call line because he wanted to show me a couple of things. Okay. Okay. Main thing, he wanted to show me precisely what it looked like to be a seasoned saint, yet extremely worldly and carnal. Saved for a very long time, can speak in tongues and pray a demon out of a corner, but the lifestyle does not match what's going on on the prayer line. So one morning on the prayer line, we had a guest on the line. So it wasn't just she and I on the prayer line that particular morning. And this prayer warrior was absolutely nothing to play with. Okay. I remember hearing her prayers and thinking to myself, her prayers are so powerful. And I really hope to get to a place of prayer like that one day. Again, I was newly saved and I didn't yet understand that prayer is personal and there is no right or wrong way to do it. All of our prayers are powerful unto the Lord. But in my little newly saved mind, you know, I was aspiring to pray like her because her prayers were so powerful that morning. So after this sister prayed, we all got off the call and went about our respective days. A few weeks later, I happened to be in the car with the sister in Christ who originally invited me to join her on the prayer call each morning. And she was on the phone with the sister who was the powerful uh, prayer warrior guest on the prayer line a few weeks prior. All of a sudden, the sister who was in the car with me put her cell phone on speaker and I could hear that prayer warrior cursing in absolute fury. Okay, she was cursing out the sister who was sitting in the car with me. And she was absolutely disgusted about something that the other sister had or had not done. Okay, I couldn't really make out why she was so angry with the sister who was sitting in the car with me. Every four letter word you could possibly think of was flowing out of her mouth like a river. And I'm just being honest, as I share this testimony with you, my stomach dropped because I was absolutely shocked by what I was hearing. You see, in my newly saved mind, OGs of the faith, and when I say OGs, the original gangsters, the, the, the long time saved saints, the seasoned saints, weren't supposed to talk like that. Seasoned saints weren't supposed to sound like they just crawled from out of the gutter, okay? People who spoke in tongues weren't supposed to curse people out with such ease. Complete confusion is what I felt as a newly saved person. 
That's what I felt as I continued to drive my car. Okay, because just weeks prior, she was on the prayer call praying in a way that left me floored. Here I am desiring of the Lord to help make me an effective prayer warrior just like her. And yet behind closed doors in her private time, when she is unaware of who is listening, she sounds just like the people who know absolutely nothing about Jesus Christ. I mean, the way she was cursing was, was unlike anything I ever thought I would hear someone saved do. I have heard people curse like that before, but these are people who are nowhere near Jesus Christ. Seasoned saints, I am talking to you. We have a responsibility to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And by definition, an ambassador is an authorized representative or messenger. Okay, how can we represent the kingdom of God when we look, sound, think, and behave like the world? It's not enough for us to walk around telling people that we've been saved for 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30 years. The question is, do we look like we've been saved that long? Do we talk like we've been saved that long? Do we behave like we've been saved that long? Because if not, there's really no need to run around and brag or boast about how long we've been walking with the Lord when it don't look like you follow him at all. I got to tell you, it was absolutely horrifying to hear that older sister in Christ curse like that. And not because I was some sugar and spice and all that's nice, holier than thou follower of Christ who never did it. Because, babe, my mouth used to be literally the gutter. Garbage. I was a cursing somebody. Okay. But it was because she'd been saved for so long. I thought, sure awful language like that would have been dealt with by then like you talking about somebody that's been saved 20 25 years still cursing like that i was much newer in christ and my language was nowhere near the fire that was coming out of her mouth on that day so again it was just very confusing to me and i always wondered why the lord allowed me to experience that so early in my walk with him and i believe he allowed it because i had such a problem with idolatry I always tended to place people on pedestals and hold them to standards of which they could never really attain, right? The Lord wanted me to know that there is always more than meets the eye. He wanted me to know that even the most seemingly quote unquote holy people are actually flawed and in need of his son, just like me. And most importantly, he wanted me to see how evil Satan can be and the traps he sets for those in the body of Christ in order to taint our witness to the lost, I was newly saved at that time, right? And so a situation like that could have totally made me be like, yeah, I don't know about this Jesus thing. Because if this chick right here who prayed like that just a few weeks ago is cursing her out like that today, what is this whole Jesus thing about, right? The enemy could have totally used this seasoned saint to turn me off, No one can take a cursing prayer warrior seriously. And truth be told, I never took that woman seriously again. Does that make me judgmental? No, it does not. It means there will never come a time when I allow someone's ability to pray fervently, convince me that they actually walk this walk. You got to do more than talk the talk. I got to see you walk this walk. Otherwise, miss me. (laughs) Miss me today and tomorrow. Jesus said you will know a tree by its fruit. So we have to be very mindful of the fruit that hangs from our individual trees. And we have to be very careful that we are not turning people away from Christ by claiming to represent him all while living lifestyles that glorify the enemy. We are supposed to be the light in this very increasingly dark world. We are supposed to be the salt of the earth. We are not supposed to be blending in with the world at all. And so going forward, let's be more mindful, church. Perfection is never the goal because it is not attainable, right? But spiritual maturity is. If you've been saved for an extended period of time, there are just some things at this late stage we should not be battling with anymore. If you are truly growing in Christ, there are just some low-ranking demons we should not be squaring off with anymore. And that's all to it. (laughs) 
you save five years, 10 years, 15, 25, 30, and you still battling the same demons you were battling when you first got saved, something is amiss. Something is amiss. <laughs> and I just wanted to take a couple of minutes today to just really get our minds back on track. We are ambassadors, we are representatives, and we cannot forget that. The lost are looking. The lost are watching. And even those who are newly in Christ, it's not just the lost, it's the babies in Christ who are looking at the OGs, who are looking at the seasoned saints. Like, how are you showing up? What, what, is, what does this walk look like? You are supposed to be a representation of what it is to walk with Christ for real. So when these babes in Christ and when those who are not saved yet look at you, the question that I want you to ask yourself is what do they see? What do they hear? How am I representing Christ as someone who has been walking with him for quite some time? And that's really all I have on this particular topic. I hope that each of you have a beautiful and blessed day in the Lord. And God willing, I will see you next time.